Hi, this lecture is about data arrangement or as some people call it logical puzzles. These questions are some of the basic questions of logical reasoning. Here, your basic understanding of logical principles is covered. You must be very good at understanding whatever has been given to you, the conditions. You must be uh, really good at arranging the data. You must be really good at being very quick at your feet. All of these uh, characteristics combine in order to you to be able to solve these questions. Data arrangement questions, as I call them, are those type of questions in which you are given a certain number of conditions about an information set. Okay, Let's say you have to arrange, you have to ascertain the information provided for uh, let's say five people. These conditions tell you what their eating preferences are like. Okay, vegetarian or non-vegetarian. So these conditions will not be very explicit. They will not be saying that person A E is a non-veg person, person B is a veg person. They will be, you know, circumventing the exact way of phrasing it and will be phrasing it in ways that will be tough for you to actually understand first hand. Now, why don't we actually take an example? Right, so let's solve this. We have four friends, let's call them A, B, C, D. Right, so this is how we normally solve data arrangement questions. You create a table, you create a visually representing uh, aid that will help you in understanding this whole set of questions, set of conditions in a visual way. Let's see, we have a group of four friends, A, B, and A, B, C, and D. Uh, we have all these sports that they might like. What do the conditions say? We say that two like playing golf. Let's assume that A and B like playing golf. Then it is clear that C and D don't like it. Other two like playing hockey. Now we know that other two like playing hockey. So A and B don't like it. C and D like it. One of the four likes football too. Okay, so now this can be any guy. A, B, C or D. Let's assume this to be A. Okay. Then they don't like it. Now we're assuming it here. Okay, so you have to remember it. Probably with a visual aid. That right? you have assumed something or if you can write it down. Assumption, something right. Now, three like playing cricket too. Now here's the problem. Probably A, B and C like it, D does not like it. Probably A, B and D like it, C does not like it. B, C, D like it, A does not like it. So, there are many uh, arrangements possible. So, we are not getting into that yet. Everyone in the group hates Polo. So, no one likes Polo. Now, we have to answer these two questions. So, for the first question, we are asked, what is the minimum number of sports that one friend must like? Okay, let's see. If we forget football and cricket from the equation right now, we see that each friend likes at least one sport. A and B like, like golf, C and D like hockey. Okay. Now, we have two assumptions here, football and cricket. Football can be liked by any of these guys, but only one of these guys. Cricket can be liked by any three of these guys, but only three of these guys. Let's see. If we say that A, B and C like cricket and D does not like cricket, then we can see that D is the person who likes the minimum number of sports, that is only one. right? This is a possible case. There are many cases possible. So what you have to do is 
Understand in your mind, is there any other case possible in which someone can like less than one number of sports? I don't think so. You definitely have one sport being liked by each of the friends. These two conditions are final. Okay. So you cannot have one person who does not like any sports, zero sports. So the minimum number of sports that one person can like will be one. You can change the uh, person who likes these sports and probably you will still have one person who will be liking only one sport. So your answer becomes here, one sport. The minimum number of sports is one that one friend must like. Now, maximum number of sports that any one friend can like. Okay. Let's see. For maximum, we have to ensure that the person who likes football also likes cricket. Because in this case, what happens is, suppose A does not like football and B likes football. And in the case of cricket, A, B and C like cricket and D does not like cricket. So what we have here is two P, uh, D likes two sports. So what we have here is D likes two sports, C likes two sports, B likes two sports and A likes two sports. Okay, so two becomes the maximum number of sports. But wait, if we change it and we say that instead of D, we have C, A, B, one of the three, any one of these three likes football. What happens here is, now you have C liking three sports. Right? So you have three as a possible case. So that becomes your answer. So this is how you will be solving a lot of data arrangement questions. Visual representation, quick thinking and a lot of assumptions being kept in the mind. Many a times your complete data will be filled, uh, your complete table will be filled with data. But uh, sometimes it does not happen like that. In that cases, do not panic. Probably the data, the table is not to be filled. Okay. The questions are not going to ask you about the whole data. They might be asking you only some specific data which you have already filled in the table. So practice a lot. Go on to the practice session. Best of luck.